and welcome to today's webinar. And today we're really excited to be introducing the new balance for S and balance for S torsion to our range. The balance for S and balance for S torsion are the latest addition to the balance family of feet from OSSA and they're designed for low to moderate activity. They join the balance foot, which is available with or without DP flexion, as well as the J-shaped carbon fibre feet that we have with the Assure and a balance J. The new balance for S and balance for S torsion are C-shaped in design and are made from glass fibre. They're offering a lightweight and waterproof solution for low active users. The cushion heel foam offers gradual stiffening in combination with a wide foot blade for stability, contributing to the feeling of a smooth rollover. There's also a torsion version available to provide additional shock absorption and rotation, helping to provide increased protection to the user's joints and residual limb. And both feet are unity compatible, which helps to reduce volume fluctuation and improves balance, which is something that could be highly beneficial to low active users. Both versions are suitable for transtibial, transfemoral and nidus articulation users and they are designed for low impact uses such as community ambulation and they're both rated to a good weight rating of 147 kgs. And the feet are designed to provide a good combination of comfort, safety and mobility to the user. So I'm just going to take you through a few features of the foot. We have the torsion unit highlighted here. The foot has C-shaped design. It's got a split toe to provide inversion and eversion to the user. It has a wider foot blade and this helps to provide more stability in stance. And then we've got the toe foam and the heel bumper to provide a progressive stiffening of the foot. And then we have an optional unity pump um, so it can be retrofitted or purchased with unity initially if preferred. The Balance for S is designed with a high performance foam at the heel extending to the full length of the foot and it's designed to contribute to a smooth rollover and provide multi-axility which is also supported by the split toe feature. The sandal toe feature allows the user to utilise a wider range of footwear and the waterproof design will also allow the users to utilise the foot in wider variety of circumstances. The fibreglass C-shape is designed to contribute to a good range of motion and a good push off with a late stance stability expecting to result from the wider foot plate. And finally, as we've already mentioned, the torsion unit can help to reduce socket pressures and protect the residual limb. Since both the balance for S and balance for S torsion are unity compatible, I thought it was a good opportunity just to recap on what some of the benefits of elevated vacuum are. One of the main features of Elevated Vacuum is that it can help provide a very firm suspension for the user, which can provide excellent security as well as improved proprioception. Elevated Vacuum also tends to assist in maintaining a more constant limb volume and therefore decreasing the need to add additional socks throughout the day. It's also been found to assist with wound healing by improving circulation throughout the residual limb. And it can also provide very good comfort to users that have got very bony and sensitive distal ends, as long as the socket fits properly with good volume and length matching. This study by Bordetel showed that there is normally a volume loss of four to 10% during the day, and 90% of this loss happens within the first two hours. Now this can lead to poor socket fitting, pistoning, and we can get a loss of proprioception and therefore a feeling of insecurity in gait. And the conclusion is that the control of volume is a necessity to help to prevent these issues. This study by Ferraro looks at the activity specific balance confidence scale. And in this, it was found that these were significantly increased when using elevated vacuum. And you can therefore argue that you're helping to improve the safety of the user as this increase indicates a lower predictive incidence of future falls. This study also reports an increase in improved functional outcomes with a reduction in skin problems such as blistering and skin breakdown and also an increase in the user's walking time indicating that active vacuum has the potential to actually increase someone's mobility. Here's some further evidence relating to active vacuum providing volume control. The findings in these studies show that the vacuum assisted sockets have been shown to eliminate daily volume loss 
as well as a more symmetrical gate being observed due to the reduction in pistoning and maintaining limb volume. Sanders found that when the limb volume decreases, the socket will be loose fitting, often causing pressure to bony prominences, which can result in pain and or injury. And using active vacuum has been shown to eliminate some of these issues. I'm just going to highlight some of the primary benefits of the Unity system. It's sleeveless, meaning that the knee flexion range can be improved, and it also therefore allows for increased reliability as it minimizes the risks of any leaks and punctures that are associated with having a sleeve dependent vacuum method. It's very lightweight and discreet. The pumps house within the foot shell, adding very little weight to the system, and it's quick and easy to elevate vacuum just utilizing the movement of the prosthetic foot. It doesn't depend on any shock mechanisms, and it can be added to a wide range of flex feet and proflex systems to meet every mobility need. And as we've mentioned, it does assist with volume stabilization, which helps to optimize socket stability, provide proprioception, and allow comfort throughout the day, whilst also limiting the need to add additional socks throughout the day. The Balance Foot S uses a fiberglass C-shaped design to optimize the toe lever available for push-off. The width of the C-shape near the posterior area of the curve narrows to avoid the foot shell, and the tight radius of the C-shaped design minimizes the build height. It should be noted that the combination of strength and flexibility of fiberglass in this foot makes it possible to create such a tight radius without compromising the structural integrity of the foot. The Balance Foot S is designed specifically to meet the needs of the lower active prosthetic user population, which may include comfort, predictability, smoothness, good energy return and ease of use. Glass fibre is used as it has the quality of good damping while responding to loading efficiently, but not aggressively, and that's due to a lower natural frequency of vibration than carbon fibre. And this can lead to a feeling of more comfort for the user and will be perceived as having gentle energy return. Glass fibre provides excellent push-off at low and moderate loads and has great load absorbing qualities at higher loads, which should help the lower active user population feel more balanced on this foot, especially during times of unexpected high load, such as when stepping on the edge of a rug, a threshold, or even on uneven terrain. So the foam at the heel and toe is a proprietary expanded thermoplastic polyurethane foam, which is a closed cell elastic particle foam that combines the advantage of TPU with the advantages of foam, making it as elastic as rubber, but lighter. And the foam has got really high resistance to abrasion. It's got a low density. It's got high elasticity, high strength, and good long-term durability. The foam in the heel of this foot is matched to the user's weight and impact level. It offers early stance stability by compressing quickly in initial contact and offers progressive stiffening during loading with its use of the heel clip, which is adhered to the bottom of the heel. And this fits intimately into the heel of the foot cover. And because of this, it is not advised to use the foot without the foot cover, as the characteristics of the foot will be affected. On this note, another thing to note is that cutting of the, the toe foam or cutting or drilling of the heel will result in loss of warranty as it will affect the characteristics of the foot. So I'm just going to run through this video that shows what's happening during a gait cycle with the Balance Foot S. At load and response, we get a quick heel compression from the heel foam and a heel clip and foot cover control heel deformation. And going into mid stance, we get a progressive stiffening of the heel, providing tibial progression. We get a natural progression of the centre of pressure and the split toe and toe foam provide multi-axility. In terminal stance, the C-shaped design stores energy, the wide foot blade offers stability to the user, and the full length toe lever supports ankle motion and also assists with push off. And at toe off, we get the energy returned from the C-shape and this provides push off to the user. This video shows the smooth rollover that the foot provides 
providing the user with a comfortable cushioned heel strike, smooth rollover and gentle energy return. As we watch this video of the balance for S for the rollover from heel to toe, note the vertical lines that appear across the screen. These lines represent the amount of loading on the foot and the direction from which that load comes to one. In early stance, you'll see a higher amount of load shown by the longer lines, and they're angled in the direction from which the prosthetic user is coming from. In mid stance, as the lines become more vertical, they also become slightly shorter, and that indicates that there is less load coming through the prosthetic foot. Finally, as the patient rolls smoothly forward into late stance, the load lines become longer as the user is pushing off the foot with the direction of these load lines leaning forward, indicating that the foot is returning energy to the user in a forward moving direction. The smoothness of progression of the balance for S was looked at in comparison to two competitive feet and they did some machine based testing and produced these Pedotti diagrams that you can see here on the screen. And we'll compare the difference between the balance for S and the two competitors. And first of all, we can notice that in early stance, there is a very smooth ramp up of load at initial contact with the balance for S, whilst also allowing the weight lines to progress forward on the heel. And that potentially reduces the need for users to stabilise their knee and allows load to enter the socket more actually also. The other feet show a distinct amount of time on the heel before quickly transitioning forward through to the midfoot and then loading again on the toe in stance. So the bounce by hair S has the most evenly distributed force vectors and the smoothest increase in picking up of load at the toes and we anticipate that users notice this movement of movement as they walk with the foot. So another way of looking at how foot functions is to map the centre of pressure over evenly spaced time intervals while the person walks with the prosthetic foot. And here we have the mapping of the sound side foot alongside the balance foot S. And notice that the balance foot S quite quickly moves the centre of pressure forward to about a third of the foot and then allows the centre of pressure to move forward evenly but gradually, whilst also directing the weight bearing towards the great toe by the end of stance. And users will likely notice the smoothness as they utilise the foot. So just to give you a couple of technical details about the foot, the glass fibre blades are category matched to each category offered, and the heel bumper comes in four stiffnesses, one for every two categories of feet. The optional torsion unit of the balance for S torsion is designed quite similarly to OSS's other torsion units. However, the main difference is that the vertical stiffness is softer in this foot to match the lower impact of the target user population. To appropriately match the activity of each user on the balance for S torsion, there are two different rotational stiffnesses of the torsion cell, as well as two stiffnesses for the internal rod support. And this chart just shows how these soft and firm versions are distributed throughout the eight different categories that are available. The balance for S torsion provides both shock absorption and rotation, helping to reduce impact and shear forces throughout the residual limb. So shock absorption and energy conservation are important aspects of efficient gait. Altered joint motion or absent muscle forces may increase joint reaction forces and lead subsequently to additional pathology. In early stance, nearly 60% of one's body weight is loaded abruptly in less than 20 milliseconds onto the ipsilateral limb. And the human body has different mechanisms to provide natural shock absorption, including control plantar flexion and knee flexion. And unfortunately, the higher the amputation, the more natural shock absorption gets lost. So for any lower limb amputee, the loss of this natural shock absorption has a negative effect on their residual limb, which isn't designed for high impact as well as the joints that are proximal to that. So therefore, protection of the remaining or possibly compromised anatomical structures becomes important to maintain so that we can maintain as much health and mobility as possible for the user. 
Additionally, it's known that all joints contribute to absorbing rotational forces during gait, as is shown here for the early mid-stance portion of the gait cycle. And without this rotation, which is lost with each joint missing from an amputation, natural gait is unachievable, with an increased deficit at higher levels of amputation. So to aid with an amputee's rehabilitation, it's therefore important to consider the influence of offering some type of shock and rotational absorption as a component to the prosthesis. So with these next few slides, we're just going to look at some of the literature that's available on rotation and shock movement. And they feature references that can help you if you're applying for funding for shock and torsion mechanisms. So this literature review by Twist concluded that if circumferential and longitudinal directed motion of the socket were permitted by introducing transverse rotation and longitudinal translation, the resulting stresses may be reduced. So from this, we can didact that the permitted rotation and shock movement can reduce shear stress on the residual limb. A study by Siegel et al. focused on 10 transsibular amputees comparing a rigid versus torsion adapter. And he concluded that torsion adapters will likely reduce discomfort and incidence of injury experienced by lower limb amputees. A further study from Segal using the same test as in the previous paper showed that the addition of a torsion adapter resulted in some small improvements in functional mobility and self-perceived pain interference with activities. Heitzman et al. found that shear stress at the residual limb in transtubular amputees that's induced by turning moments may be reduced with the use of a torsion adapter in the prosthesis. Shear stress on the residual limb may be the reason for residual limb problems, and torsion adapters may therefore be beneficial for comfort and stump condition for individual cases. So both of these feet are waterproof, and the waterproof rating means that they can be submerged up to one meter in fresh water for up to 30 minutes without any harmful effects. Just make sure that you do dry the foot afterwards once it's been exposed to water, and if it does come into contact with salt or chlorinated water, it isn't recommended. So if it does happen, then please ensure that you rinse the feet thoroughly with fresh water and dry them also as well. If the user is going to be using these feet in water, then to make sure that the other components in the prosthesis are also waterproof. You can use our new high strength waterproof pylons and um, these replace our old carbon tubes. And they've got the same waterproof rating as the Balance for S and Balance for S torsion. They're made from aluminium and titanium and they're rated to 166 kgs and they come with a warranty of 24 months. Please be sure to always use the Balance for S with a recommended foot cover and spectra sock. The foot cover does come with the feet. As mentioned, the heel clip plays a role in the progressive stiffening of the foot, so do ensure that it is fully seated into the foot cover. To ensure that the heel is fully seated into the foot cover, just reflect the sock back and then have a look to see if the edge of the foam is still visible. If it is, like in the image at the top there, then reapply the foot cover and just make sure you get that heel clip securely fastened in. And once you've checked that the heel clip is in position, just pull the spectra sock back up around the C-shaped portion of the foot. The bench alignment for both feet is the same as the rest of our foot range. So for the best practice, just make sure that you account for the heel height of the shoe and then align the reference line through the posterior third of the foot. And you can refer to the alignment reference line on the inside of the foot cover, which highlights the posterior third of the foot. When considering your dynamic alignment, bear in mind the heel stores energy after initial contact and will release that energy to help guide the patient into mid stance and beyond. So just keep in mind the anterior and posterior shifts of the foot, as well as plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, that these will have an impact and an effect on the rollover, and you may need to just adjust these to the user. So as I've already mentioned, the weight limit for the Balance for S is 147 kgs, and this does come with a three-year warranty. It's got its own specific category selection chart, so do refer to that when you're ordering the foot. And there's some information on the build heights for the different feet sizes, um, shown on the screen there. Here is the ordering information for the Balance for S. The code is BSP0, and if you want to order this with Unity, then just replace the zero with a U. The Balance for S torsion also has a weight limit of 147 kgs. However, the smaller sizes of size 22 to 24 have a weight limit of 100 kgs. The warranty is also three years, and the build height ranges from 197 millimeters 
to 222 millimeters depending on the foot size. Here is the codes for the torsion version and again just replace the zero with a U if you want to add unity. So just to summarize, the feet are made from glass fiber and are C-shaped in design. They're offering a lightweight waterproof option for low impact users and feature a smooth rollover with good stability and cushioning from the heel foam. And both feet are unity compatible. So thank you all for listening. Please do let us know if you've got any questions. Otherwise, feel free to call or email myself, Rob or Lizzie um, from the clinical team. We're happy to send you any information you need. And we'll just hold on the line and see if any of you guys have any questions. Thank you.